Hello, today we're going to look at the idea of power and how we use that in science. Now, to help us understand this, I've got an example of somebody walking up some stairs. So if you imagine it takes a certain amount of energy to get to the top of the stairs, you have to transfer a certain amount of energy. And in this example, we'll call it 10 joules to get to the top of those stairs. Now we can look at a second example. So doing the same task, but the slight difference here is that the person is moving more quickly. The person is running. So it takes still takes 10 joules of energy, still need to transfer 10 joules of energy to get to the top of the stairs. But on the right hand side, the second example, the person is running. The energy transfer is the same, so it's 10 joules for each case. So what actually is the difference? Well, let's make a note here. The energy transferred for each example is the same. So what exactly is different about those two scenarios? Well, the power is different. The power for each example is different. And that is because when we talk about power, we talk about energy transfer in joules, but we also talk about the time taken. So when we calculate power, we take the time into consideration as well as the energy transferred. In the second example, we associate more power with somebody running up the stairs than just walking, even though the energy transfer is the same. And that's because it was done in a shorter time. Okay, so we should be able to then calculate power using an equation. And in fact, there are two equations that you need to know when we're talking about power in this example. So the power is the energy transferred divided by the time. That's two ways you might see it. The energy transferred, as we know, or should know by now, is measured in joules. Time is going to be in seconds. So anytime you do calculations using this equation, the time must be in seconds. Sometimes you may need to convert from minutes to seconds or even hours to seconds. And the power is, well, we could say it's joules per second, but there is actually a different name we use for that, even though the meaning is the same, and that is watts. So watts means joules per second. That's exactly the same thing. And it's the unit for power. Okay, and you might see the equation written in a different way with the letters. So that's just equates like this. So it's quite straightforward. The second example of the equation uh, is the same thing, but it's written in a slightly different way. So power is work done divided by time. And again, power is in watts, which means joules per second. And the uh, abbreviation for that is a capital W, capital W. The work done actually means exactly the same thing as energy transferred. When we talk about work done in science and in physics, it means energy transferred. So if somebody is lifting a weight or lifting a mass, there is energy being transferred, work is being done. Time again is the same in seconds. And so we can use those two equations. The unfortunate thing about these two is that we don't, we aren't given these on our equation sheet. So you do need to memorize them. One thing I want to go through quickly is the idea of power ratings on appliances. So here we've got a speaker and sometimes we talk about speakers in terms of the power and imagine this was a hundred watt speaker. What does, what does that exactly mean? Well, it means because what means joules per second, it means that the speaker transfers a hundred joules of energy per second. Let's have a look at one more example. We've got a lamp and a typical power for a lamp might be 50 watts. And if we're getting the hang of this now, this means that the lamp is transferring 50 joules every second. So the speaker in this case is transferring twice as many joules per second compared to the lamp. Okay, but that's what we mean when we're talking about the power of an appliance, the number of joules transferred per second. What we should do now is have a go at applying and practicing the use of our equations. So I've got two examples, one quite straightforward one and one slightly trickier. This is the slightly easier one. We've got a question here, a motor lifts a mass and transfers 20 joules of energy in 10 seconds, calculate the power. So our equation is energy transfer divided by time, which is that. And so we just put in the numbers into our equation, 20 divided by 10, that gives a power of two, and remember the unit is watts. So the answer for that is two watts, could be a one or two mark question, probably a two mark question, but it's quite straightforward. Second one is less straightforward. 
but it uses the same equation, but we need to use a second equation as well. So let's look and see how this works. We've got a mass of 5 kg being lifted to 1.2 meters in 30 seconds, and we need to calculate the power. Now there's a little bit of a clue here, because they've given us g as 10. It might be given as 9.8 or maybe 9.81, but in this example I'm giving 10. And we need to calculate the power. So power is energy transferred over time. How do we work out the energy transferred? Well, in our question, we have a mass, we have a height, and we have g. So hopefully that will prompt you to remember the gravitational potential energy equation, which is the energy something gains due to its height above a certain surface or height above the ground. And the equation for that, again, you have to memorize this one, but it's m times g times h. So in this case, it will be 5, the mass is 5, times 10, which is given to you in the question, times the height, which is 1.2 meters. If we work that out, that will give us an answer of 60. And because it's energy, it's measured in joules. So here we have our energy transferred. So once we have our energy transferred, it's a simple case of using our equation from the previous question. Power is energy transferred over time. So that would be 60 divided by 30, which is given in the question, the time of 30 seconds. And again, the answer is 2, coincidentally. So again, just to highlight that when we're talking about power, we also take into consideration the times. So we've got two different times, but we've still got the same power for those motors. Okay, so those were two examples. The second one was slightly trickier than the first one because you had to use two equations. So you'd probably get a couple more marks for that one. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you do have to remember the two equations that we use there. So always good practice to do as many questions as we can. So that's our short video on power. We'll be revisiting this again when we do electricity. But for now, that's all we have. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.